Hi, my name is Christina. I'm a registered nurse and health coach. In this video, I will be discussing nickel food allergy. In order to understand what a nickel food allergy is, we first need to talk about allergic contact dermatitis. Allergic contact dermatitis is a type of eczema that is triggered by an allergen coming in contact with the skin. An allergen is a substance that has been identified by your body as a foreign invader. Some substances can become an allergen after one exposure and some will take months or years of repeated exposures before the body identifies it as an allergen. Allergic contact dermatitis is a type four hypersensitivity. That means the reactions are delayed. It takes on average 48 to 72 hours after an exposure for the body to develop a rash. Allergic contact dermatitis is diagnosed by a dermatologist most often. It is important to have a patch test to confirm this allergy. Patch testing is the gold standard test to diagnose allergic contact dermatitis. It is a non-invasive diagnostic exam where substances that contain common allergens are placed on a large area of the body, most commonly the back. They are secured with hypoallergenic tape left there for 48 hours and then after an additional 48 hours the results are read. So most dermatologists will place patches on a Monday, remove them on Wednesday, and read the final results on Friday. Delayed reactions can occur. It is important to get those patch test sites labeled so that you can know any delayed reactions. And also get a complete list of all your allergies. Unfortunately, people with ACD do tend to have multiple allergies. So once you know you are allergic to nickel, strict avoidance is necessary to heal this type of rash. That means don't touch, cook with, or use any products that contain nickel. It may be helpful to use a product called Nickel Alert to test for nickel in your environment, and also wearing gloves can help protect the skin. So if strict avoidance has been followed and your eczema still persists, that's when systemic contact dermatitis to nickel or systemic nickel allergy syndrome may be suspected. Those are the medical terms for a nickel food allergy. Systemic contact dermatitis to nickel or systemic nickel allergy syndrome is characterized by developing symptoms, most commonly skin rashes, from exposures to nickel by various routes, so not only from direct contact with the skin. Ingesting or eating foods high in nickel can cause skin rashes in people that have the systemic version of allergic contact dermatitis. Also, having surgical implants or dental work that contains nickel can also cause eczema in these individuals. SNAS can present differently in individuals depending on what allergies they have and whether or not they have surgical implants or dental work resulting in chronic exposures. Symptoms that have been associated with SNAS include a specific type of rash called dyshydrotic eczema or pomphylix, which is known for its intense itch with small blisters that weep fluid, rashes in spite of strict avoidance of all allergens, eye eczema, headaches, fibromyalgia, heartburn, abdominal pain, nausea, constipation, diarrhea, bloating, asthma, and chronic fatigue syndrome. It is impossible to avoid nickel completely. Nickel is found in our food and water in varying amounts. Certain foods contain higher amounts of nickel, such as nuts, seeds, beans, soy, whole grains, oats, and certain fruits and vegetables. It depends on the growing region and how the food was prepared. Certain produce contain higher amounts of nickel from the uptake of nickel in soil, whereas heavily processed foods and supplements can be contaminated with nickel through contact with machinery. Also, food preparation and packaging methods can leach nickel into food, such as canning and cooking acidic foods in stainless steel. As with ACD, SNAS is a delayed reaction. It can take anywhere from one to four days to react after eating foods high in nickel. Most people can tolerate around 150 micrograms of nickel per day, 
but that depends on the individual. Everyone's threshold is different. There are good apps and resources out there, such as the Nickel Navigator app and Rebolytics website that has information on the average amount of nickel in food, as well as a point system for maintaining a low nickel diet. There's also the Italian nickel detox diet. This diet separates foods into low, moderate, and high categories. I recommend getting started on the Italian nickel detox diet. Um, it is a diet that also takes into account other sensitivities, such as a histamine intolerance, which a lot of people with SNAS have during the detox period. And it also focuses on eating whole foods. Some people use the Nickel Navigator app in conjunction with the Italian Nickel Detox Diet. It just depends on the individual. The detox period for this allergy is about anywhere from three months to six months. It really depends on the individual. Uh, some people will start seeing a reduction in their symptoms and rashes in a few weeks. Um, and others, you know, it will take longer. It just depends. Research has shown that taking vitamin C with every meal can help inhibit the absorption of nickel. Also, certain strains of probiotics such as l rutery and eating a diet rich in iron can be helpful in managing this allergy as well. However, it is not recommended to take a lot of supplements because supplements can be contaminated with nickel. But as always, speak with your healthcare provider about managing this allergy. A common misconception is that people with this allergy have toxic levels of nickel in their system. Normally, this is not the case. Of course, there are exceptions. People with a nickel food allergy are just very sensitive to small amounts of a nickel in their system. They do not have more nickel in their body than the next person. Beware of chelation and heavy metal detox protocols as the supplements that go along with these protocols normally just add to your overall daily allowance of nickel. Unfortunately, it is not uncommon that doctors don't know about this condition. I recommend familiarizing yourself with the literature and sharing research articles with your doctors. For more information, you can visit my website, christinadavidwellness.com. I have a page dedicated to research articles and resources. Or you can contact me at info at